This is the first revision video for the definitions of abnormality in the psychopathology unit. Psychopathology is the study of mental ill health and to treat people we must first be able to define what is normal and what is abnormal. Um, if you look at that photo there of people dressed up for a Halloween party, that's completely normal. What wouldn't be normal is if somebody was, say, a nurse and they went to work dressed as Freddy Krueger and didn't think there was anything wrong with that. That would be an indication that they are not normal. So there are four definitions of abnormality that you will need to know and you'll need to outline and evaluate each one. They're called statistical infrequency, deviation from social norms, failure to function adequately and deviation from ideal mental health. Um, in this video, we're just looking at statistical infrequency, but you can remember the four definitions through the mnemonic sad dogs, fat dogs to recall the four definitions. Statistical infrequency defines abnormality as behaviours that are extremely rare. So have a look at the picture there and you can see a bell shaped curve and along the X axis, you can see the zero that represents the mean for a particular behaviour or a particular characteristic that is normally distributed. And then the standard deviations go in either way from the mean. So people who do things more than the mean or people who do things less than the mean. And we're looking at people, statistical and frequency says that certain, uh, if you are over two standard deviations away from the mean with your particular behaviour or characteristic, then that is an indication that you may have mental ill health. So the dark blue section are people who are one standard deviation from the mean, the light blue section, they're two standard deviations and anyone who falls into that category is considered normal. It's just the red sections that are at either end of the spectrum uh, and they're very unusual. It's only about 4% of the population um, who will fall into that category and it means they might have mental ill health. So to, to just explain that a bit more, let's have a look at IQ. So IQ measures intelligence and you can see on this bell shaped curve that the mean IQ is 100. So if you did an IQ test and you get 100, that's completely normal. That's what most people are. Some people might be one or two standard deviations away from the mean. So they would have an IQ of anywhere between 70 and 130. And that is still considered normal. But 4% of the population roughly are going to have uh, they're going to be over two standard deviations away from the mean. So if you have an IQ of less than 70 or over 130, then that is complete. That's very, very rare. And if it's under 70, then that's an indication that you might have an intellectual disability disorder. In, in terms of other behaviours in when, you know, when we're looking at mental ill health, um, we're talking about certain behaviours and characteristics that are normally distributed. So it could be something like um, a fear of like having a phobia, so fear of dogs or clowns, etc. Um, so most people might have um, an anxiety or a fear of something to a certain degree, but it's people that have extreme fears who would be over two standard deviations away from the mean would have a phobia. And then people who have an obsession with something, say dogs, they're also not normal. That might indicate that they might have um, an, some kind of obsessional behaviour going on. Um, you can see some pictures on the screen. Um, that guy there is called Charlie and the woman licking the toilet seat is called Claire. And if you're in my class, then I will have shown you a, a video, a short video about those people. They're from a programme on Channel 4 called um, Obsessive Compulsive Cleaners. Um, I'll put a link in the description below for anyone who hasn't seen it. It's only a few minutes long. When you watch it, you can see that both of these people have unusual behaviours. So in terms of cleaning, um, a normally, like, let's imagine that a normal amount of cleaning per week might be, I don't know, six or seven hours or something. So the mean might be seven hours cleaning a week. And then anyone who cleans like more or less than that is considered normal. If you're, but if you're over two standard deviations away from the number of hours that most people clean, then that's considered abnormal. And that's represented by Charlie and Claire. So Charlie doesn't clean at all and has something called hoarder's disorder, which is a form of OCD. And Claire has, she cleans for 22 hours a week, which is also not normal. 
and she has a, you know she also has OCD um, but it is expressed in a way that she is obsessed with cleaning so Charlie can't throw anything away and Claire can't stop cleaning and both of them are abnormal when you look at the comments section on the YouTube video clip of it it frustrates me there's loads of people saying things like oh I wish I was like Claire I could do with being her Claire doesn't want to be Claire if you listen to what she says she hasn't got a partner she doesn't get to socialize she says that she can't even have a cup of tea because there's a bullying voice in her head saying you've got to go and clean the kitchen so it completely dominates her life and it and it ruins her life um, and the same with Charlie, you know, he can't socialise, he can't have people over, he lives in complete squalor and he's just completely overwhelmed by it. He doesn't know where to start. He doesn't, he can't, it is a disorder. And so both of these people are displaying infrequent, rare cleaning behaviours, but from either end of the spectrum. So we're going to look at some evaluation points. There's only three for each one because there's four definitions of abnormality. Um, so we're going to look, the first one is a criticism of the statistical infrequency defi um, ab definition of abnormality. And it says that rare behaviours are not distinguished between desirable and undesirable. So statistical infrequency is criticised because some rare behaviours, such as having a high IQ, are desirable. And some common mental health issues, such as anxiety, are undesirable. And in order to identify behaviours that need treatment, there needs to be a means of identifying infrequent and undesirable behaviours. And the reason I've got a picture of that guy there, he's called Dara O'Brien, he's an Irish comedian. And he's got an incredibly high IQ. And I think there was a programme where he, he sat the GCSE maths exam with no preparation uh, to see how he'd get on. And he got an A star and he only did 10 minutes like of the exam. So he's not someone who is abnormal or has a mental health disorder. He's just someone who's very intelligent. So he's a good example of someone who is statistically infrequent, but doesn't have an abnormality that we know of. And the next evaluation is um, both a strength and a criticism. So it's to do with the fact that statistical infrequency has an objective cutoff point, but that kind of also has a problem in terms of negative labelling. So sometimes it is useful to have an objective cutoff point for diagnosis in the way that you do with statistical infrequency. People who are more than two standard deviations below the mean for IQ are defined as having an intellectual disability, and that can actually be helpful in terms of receiving support to live independently. However, not everyone who displays rare behaviours benefit from having a diagnosis of a mental disorder. Some people with a low IQ live and work and have completely fulfilled lives. And so a diagnosis in this instance could be negative in terms of how the person is perceived by others and could affect their self-esteem. So you need to uh, do some either revision or directed study if you want to consolidate your knowledge and you could outline the statistical and frequency definition of abnormality. Um, you could do an AO2 question. So for example, explain whether Charlie and Claire meet the criteria for abnormality according to the statistical and frequency definition. You could uh, make sure that you do the evaluation. So evaluate the statistical and frequency definition of abnormality. And then I really recommend that you watch the next videos on the definitions. And those are your picture references.